Aloha, friends. Thanks so much for listening to the More Than You Ask For podcast. We'll get right back into the episode, but I want to let you know about the Bible cast that Jimmy leads every Monday through Thursday morning at 7 a.m. Jimmy takes a section of scripture, and in about 10 minutes, we read and we study it together. We would love for you to join us. It's a great way to start a daily scripture practice, spend time with God, and connect with others. You can check out tfc.org slash biblecast to learn more about how to join. I'll see you at 7 a.m. Hey, More Than You Ask For listeners, we are so excited to announce that Pastor Jimmy's book, Kingdom Come, is now available in an audio version. Kingdom Come is an incredible resource, and it's all about how you are designed, how we are designed to live in heaven on earth, beginning the minute that we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So maybe you have read Kingdom Come, it's time to listen to it. Maybe this is the first time you're hearing about Kingdom Come, it's time to listen to it. You need this in your life, your friends need this in your life. Pastor Jimmy himself narrates the book so you get to get a little bit more up close and personal with Pastor Jimmy as he is delivering this message right to you. You can download it on iTunes or Audible. Go search Kingdom Come by Jimmy Witcher and get your copy today. Hey there, friends. Thanks so much for joining us for another episode of More Than You Ask For. We love that you are joining us. We've got a really special treat today. We have a special guest with us. Yeah, we're going to have Franklin here with us, and we're so excited to have him. But I do want to give you a heads up. We're going to be covering numerous subjects. One of those is the issue of suicide. And I know that's something that affects so many people across various cultures. We certainly want your parents to know we're going to be talking about that in this episode. And if you or anyone you know is struggling with suicide, I want to encourage you to check out stayhere.live. It's an amazing website, and it'll get you in touch with some great resources. there more than you ask for listeners. We are so glad that you are joining us and maybe you're joining us here on our pod show. We have got an exciting guest here with us today. And so we're really glad that you are here today. We have a friend with us that we actually met. Um, Honey, we met like a month ago, Franklin, about a month or so ago at the Digital Revival Collective. And what that is, is that I just want you to know, this is just a little taste. There are so many what you would know as Christian influencers on social media, but we're going to call them digital evangelists. That's right. <laughs> and what they are doing on social media is they are taking their testimonies and they are sharing in an unashamed fashion. Mm-hmm. They are sharing and it is they're ministering the gospel to people, leading people to Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. to freedom, to salvation, to healing, to deliverance. It's amazing what God is doing through the social media avenue. So Jimmy and I got to be with several of these digital evangelists, the revivalists, uh, about a month or so ago, and we met our guest, who is Franklin Rivas Hodge. Yay. So, Franklin, welcome. Franklin. Thank, welcome. You, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. We're so yeah. glad that you're here. Um, Jimmy and I talked, and you have one of the most amazing, actually, I would say, honey, tell me if you, you say this, not just one of the most amazing, but I would say the most amazing testimony Mm. I have ever heard in my life. Thank you. And what I love is that God has done a beautiful work in you. And we love exalting Jesus and bringing glory to his name. So welcome to you. Yeah, we're so glad you're here, man. Thank you. It's an honor to be here, man. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. And, And I would say, you know, when we when we met Franklin, I remember when we met you because we were standing in the buffet line, yeah, you know, yeah. at the event. <laughs> we were all, all holding plates yeah. of food and we were visiting. And you know, I don't want to I don't want to overstate this, and and I don't want to be uh, overly dramatic. Y'all know me; I'm I'm so dramatic. But uh, <laughs> there are people that God puts in your path, and you go, I know this is a God moment. Yeah, and, and I yeah. know God put us together and connected us in that moment. And so, yeah, we we just met a month ago, but I feel like I've known you for a long time, Literally, and our, yeah. our hearts yeah. are very connected. We love you dearly. And uh, are so excited about your story and what God's doing in you and what He's about to do in you mm-hmm. as well. I mean, God, you you know this, I know, but you're you're on the verge of just moving into a whole new thing that God has for you. Not yeah. only the fact that you're going to get married here pretty quick, which yeah. is going to be awesome. Yay. Yeah, uh, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> but also what God's doing uh, in your ministry and mm-hmm. and leading forward in that. So just so powerful. Yeah, yeah. Thank y'all so much. It's literally like as I said, it's an honor to be here, and I'm so thankful. And as you said, it's like 
from the moment that I met y'all, I knew Roshan kind of said it like, hey, yeah. Pastor Jimmy and uh, Kim, like, y'all, y'all have to, you, y'all have to meet. And I was like, okay, I don't know who they are, but sure, <laughs> like, we'll be some time. And so it was so crazy, but whenever I, yeah. I like, your face, it was the one that I was like, okay, she has the Holy Spirit, definitely. That's right. And then, like, meeting you, like, just getting to know you more mm-hmm. and everything, and definitely see that there is something that the Lord is going to mm-hmm. do and the reason why he has us together and everything. And so it's just been such an honor, same mm-hmm. way, like, just meeting y'all and spending time with y'all. So I'm I'm thankful to be here. Yeah. Really appreciate Aww. it. We're so thankful. And, you know, this is a little bit different way that we, we do uh, our podcast, mm-hmm. our part show here. Usually we're answering a question. And uh, and so I think I want to pose a little bit of a question, and that is, what can what can God not do for you? You know, mm. maybe is the question because the answer, of course, to that is nothing. God yeah. can do anything, yeah. and uh, no matter where you are, no matter how lost you think you are, no matter how down you think you are, yep. God can come through, and and that's really a big part of your story, yeah. and that's a that's a big part of your your testimony, yeah. Franklin. So, uh, you know, I, I want to start with this because we were talking about this a little earlier today, and. And you know, you grew up knowing God, so mm-hmm. it, it wasn't like yeah. you were an atheist. And yeah. uh, you got saved at twenty-one, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And uh, met Jesus and accepted Jesus at twenty-one. And and you just turned twenty-five. So, yes. So that you know, just put everything in context yeah, for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you are very young. You are very young. You yeah. are. We are even older than twice as old as you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the, you're the age of our. You're you're a little bit younger than our youngest son. So yeah. <laughs> when uh, when you look at that, and and so you grew up knowing God, yeah, but you grew up hating God, yeah, yeah, and uh, and so I'd kind of like to just start there, you know, because yeah. a lot of times people start their journey of didn't believe in God, started as an atheist, but you started out literally hating God, yeah. So why don't, can you just unpack that for us? Yeah, just yeah, give us definitely. that kind of little bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, you're correct. Like I I grew up knowing God, but just because you know God doesn't make you a Christian, right? Like right. doesn't make you that you are. Uh, just, yeah, just this person that's supposed to be having the Holy Spirit in and everything, but uh, grew up, not like grew up in a Catholic church, going to a Catholic church. So I knew everything about Jesus. I knew everything about the Father. I knew everything about Mary. I knew everything about the angels, right? But um, the way that I got treated at the church mm-hmm. is whenever, uh, is what it hurt me. And mm-hmm. that's whenever I start distancing myself from God and from all the, like the community of God, right? And then like going through the journal of like growing up, I went through so much, uh, like getting abused and just getting uh, like physically, mentally and Mm -hmm. and sexually abused and uh, getting homeless and then going like growing up without a parents and everything, like literally like it's so much that it was into it, that it, it went from distancing myself into being angry at God. Mm-hmm. Right. And so like from that moment, like I was angry at God for a while. And then so much uh, happened between it that I start hating God. And uh, hating God is where like I held, I hang on to it. Because like uh, whenever I was nine years old, I lost an uncle that it was like a father figure to me. Mm. And I mean, growing up without a, a father figure as a, as a guy, like you need guidance. Mm-hmm. You right. need somebody to disciple you. You need somebody right. to... To show you the way that the way that you need to treat uh, like yes. other people, right? Yes. I didn't have none of that, and this uncle was doing it for me, and he got killed uh, three days before Christmas Day, oh. and so he was like, he was the one that was gonna adopt me, and so that's whenever like the hate towards God started it, mm-hmm. and that started changing just everything for me, and like from the ages of like nine, I would say like I hated God, all the way to twenty one. So that's kind of like, that's how that process went. And I mean, whenever I decided to hate God, I decided that I was going to go the whole opposite direction of being a Christian. Like whatever it was God, I went as far as you can go the opposite. Wow. And that meant like the, whoever I needed to hurt, whoever I needed to run over, whatever I needed to do, I was in a surviving mode and I did. You know what I mean? And so yeah. that's how far... I thought I was I was completely lost. I thought I was completely gone. Wow. So I would no hope, literally, completely just without a hope. Yeah. So. 
No. So with just even just a little bit of what you said there then mm-hmm. was that at nine, you wanted to be adopted by this uncle mm-hmm. and then he was killed three days before you were to be adopted. Yeah. And that was a turning point for you, yeah. which we could all recognize, you know, nine years old. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's very young. But then too, then, so you didn't have your parents no. then. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't have parents from Mm-mm. the time you were a a born. very young age yeah. from the time you were born. Like you've never met your parents. No. Nah, so I never met my dad. I, I just found out like two weeks ago that my biological dad just died. Oh, so, oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. So okay. he, he was in prison down in Houston. Okay. Uh, and I got the word. Somebody found me on Facebook and found out that like I was, uh, that I'm their nephew. And so they shared with me like, hey, your dad passed mm-hmm. away. And so I never met him. You know oh my I mean? goodness! And, so, and I met my I met my mom uh, for the first time whenever I was eighteen, and it was whenever we were doing the uh, adoption uh, paperwork. She had to okay. sign me off. Oh, okay. So uh, that's how I met her, like oh signing gosh. me oh off goodness. into being adopted into a family. That's okay. whenever I met I met my biological mom for the first time. So, wow, Franklin. Yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't know that part of your story, and you've shared <laughs> no. a lot with us. Yes. So, thank you yeah. for sharing yeah. that. Yeah. And you know, um, so for any for being such a young child mm-hmm. and not to have your parents, I mean, yeah. you could understand that. Okay, well, this isn't this God thing's not working out for me. Yeah. And so you turned and you went completely the opposite direction. Yeah. So. How did that work out for you? Man, didn't work out very well. Didn't work out very well. <laughs> it okay. didn't at all. Yeah, but that's that's the one thing that now being a Christian, and that's like what I told, I, I encourage my friends with that are Christ, Christians that is like, hey, don't just call yourself a Christian and don't live like it. Because what he started like separating me from God, it was the, the people, right? Wow. Like the people that would say, oh, yeah, I'm a, I, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ. But the way that you leave it, it isn't. It doesn't uh, and, and line up. Yeah, it doesn't line up. And so I'm like, okay, we are the ones that whenever we claim to be Christians, the non-believer, they mm. see us the way that we act, and so they put our image into God, mm. right? And that's what I did with the people, like the way that they were treating me, looking at me. They would take their kids away from me so they wouldn't play with me because I was like the street kid, mm. and so uh, all that like started hurting me, and. It made me like, yeah, just walk away from it. I was like, if that's the God that y'all are serving, okay. then I don't want it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, in my eyes, I was doing the right thing. Yeah. In my eyes, I was like, I was the one winning, right? Yeah. But it didn't let me do anything but hurt. Right. And literally just ended up in the in the pit, like the prodigal yeah. son. Yeah, wow. literally. So, but, well, Oh, go ahead, babe. Yeah, go ahead. No, like literally the prodigal son. So mm-hmm. you, you, were, you were homeless at what age? Uh, six. At six years old. Mm-hmm. So you're in El Salvador, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you became homeless at six because you just basically ran away from the abuse yeah. uh, that you were in. Yeah. And and so, you know, kind of got involved then at that point at, at six, you're homeless, literally living on the street. Mm-hmm. And where does it go from there? Yeah, yeah. So How do you get from there to nine? Yeah, yeah. So from there, I was in the streets and then my uncle, uh, he was a truck driver for Pepsi. So he, he found out and everything. And so like he started helping me. And he would always like come to me, like every time that he was in town, he would uh, bring me uh, Coca, uh, Pepsi products and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, he would always treat me right and like give me gifts and everything. So he did start playing the role of a a dad in my life. Um, And so whenever that happened, like after that happening, I kind of like start feeling the sense of, uh, okay, I could be somebody. I could, uh, I, I have hope. Right, but whenever he got killed, I didn't believe that he was killed. Like for a long time, I believed that he just left, like mm-hmm. my dad and my mom, right? Because like the first sure. thing that I had experienced, it was abandonment and rejection. Uh, and so whenever I find out that he got killed, I was like, you can just tell me that he didn't want me and he left. So that's just easy like that. And so whenever they brought his body uh, into the house that, that he was in the casket, I, I as cried and pled, like plead to see him and they didn't let me. And so, because they thought that a kid like my age mm-hmm. shouldn't see a body like that, but they didn't know that I had seen so much more than uh, a dead body. Sure. And so that hurt me even more. But from then that led me, that hurt led me into 
getting into gangs. Mm -hmm. And so I got into gangs over there. And then from then on, I just started going like farther and farther and farther from not just like God, but from just the world. Yeah. Like right. just, yeah, just start getting lost and uh, doing so many things that I shouldn't have done. Like I, that so many things that a teenager shouldn't be doing. You right. know what I mean? Right. And so, yeah, so that's, that's what it led me into coming to the USA because wow. um, I had to leave, leave the country uh, because I was being persecuted. It got to that point to where like I started being persecuted. Um, like like persecuted, like your life was on the line, yes, persecuted. Yes, yeah. yes, persecuted. I mean, I've been shot uh, three times and I've been stabbed twice. And so like it literally, whenever early that we were uh, talking about it, like it just reminded me of like how much the angels protect you, mm -hmm. right? And how much God has been through it all. That's right. Yes. Literally like through it all. Yes. And uh, from the, like even without us knowing, there's times yeah. that like literally we, we go and like along the road, we look backwards and we're like, that's where he was, mm -hmm. right? Because that's a huge question that like I used to ask myself, where is God, right? Yes. Where is God, right? Yes. And so uh, he was there all day long, all day long. And so- <laughs> even, even though you hated him. Yeah, yeah, literally, <laughs> even though I hated him. That's, that's what like, he, I think is so crazy. And that's how cool he is. That like, even though I hated him, he was like, hey, it's all right. And I, I, that, I like, I imagine that's how like, as, as parents, like sometimes your kid, I bet like your kids told y'all, hey, like I hate you, like you didn't, you're not giving me this and that, like I hate you. And you were like, it's okay, you can hate me for a little bit. You're gonna, lo you're gonna love me anyway. So. That's right, it's all yeah. gonna work yeah. out. My love is bigger. Yeah. Yes, yeah, my exactly. love is bigger. Yeah. I did have one child who told me one time, I wish you didn't love me so much. And I, in that kind of a fit, and I was just like, well, my love is stronger than everything that you're feeling right yeah. now. So, yeah. yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm so thankful yeah. that God's love is relentless. Yes. He is so strong. You mm -hmm. know, we know that God is loving and mm -hmm. he is kind mm -hmm. and he is gentle. Yes. But sometimes I think that can lead us to think of a picture of him that he's soft and frail. Yeah. Right. But he's not. Mm -hmm. He is so strong. Mm -hmm. And it takes that kind of strong love to love and persevere yeah. through all of the hate. Mm -hmm. And anyone could even understand then, Franklin, and just knowing this part of your story, that that's a lot of trauma yeah. for anyone for a small child, mm -hmm. it's understandable to see where someone could end up hating God mm -hmm. because of all of the circumstances yeah. in your life. Yeah. And then now, as you're saying, as you look back and you start <laughs> recognizing, wow, I hated God, but God had his angels there. He was protecting yeah. me. He was guiding me. He was there every day, all mm -hmm. day long. Yeah. And that is amazing. So will you just even share with us then? So you make it to the United States. Yeah. When you make it to the United States, is everything better then? Or <laughs> uh, Okay, I guess not. <laughs> I wish you could. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like I came to the USA and uh, I mean, first of all, I didn't spoke the language. Okay. Right. So that was first thing. Second of all, I didn't have a family, right? So I came and no, not knowing nobody, not knowing the the uh, the language. The only reason why I came here is because like being persecuted. So this was supposed to be a like a secure place, right? Okay. Like a safe place. A safe place. But if anything, it made it worse because oh, I was wow. like, all right, like I'm being persecuted, and now I'm in this place where like I don't have nobody, no support system yeah, at literally. all. Yeah, nothing, and so. Uh, it made a worse. I can't connect. I can't connect with people, which in a way was great because I mean I didn't trust in nobody. So mm. that kind of helped me like not to talk to anybody because I yeah. couldn't talk to you even if I wanted to. Yeah. But yeah, that led me into here. So things didn't got easy. And, and, like, and just put this in context: mm -hmm. you're 16, right? Yeah, yeah, I was 16. So at you're that time. 16 years old. Mm -hmm. You made the journey from El Salvador to USA uh, to the USA mm -hmm. on your own. Yeah. Yeah, just literally walking and running and getting in trucks, hopping out of trucks and riding on top of uh, trains and then had it, having to jump off trains because the uh, federal Mexican uh, yeah. like system was like, or like soldiers were up the road. So literally, I mean, it was, it was a journey. Like I can write a whole book just of like- <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna that, need to write a book, yeah. Franklin. Oh, for sure, yeah. You're so, gonna need to write a book. Yeah, so wow. it was. So you get here at 16, you mm -hmm. don't know the language, you have no mm -hmm. support system, don't know no. the fam, no, no family, don't know anything. No, mm -mm. yeah, so came here and yeah, like I got in the, I got 
I started getting uh, fostered by mm -hmm. a family, which is so crazy. Uh, they they were my blood family, which I have yeah I haven't shared this with y'all. No, they, I didn't know yeah, that. they were my blood family, uh, and so they were my aunt, my aunt, uh, my mom's sister, okay. and so they started fostering me. Uh, but I mean, I was a street kid. I yeah. didn't know. I was like literally like a, a deer, right? Mm -hmm. Like a wild deer. You put mm -hmm. it in the in the living room. That is not gonna go well. All your okay. furniture, right. everything is gonna be like okay. broke. And so well, that's, well, you had mentioned to us mm -hmm. before. You didn't know what a table was for. Nope. Had mm -hmm. never slept in a bed. Nope. Yeah, yeah, man. Literally. So whenever I came into the house, like everything was new. Just having a roof over my head, it was it was weird because being homeless uh, for a while, like. I have been used to like sleeping on the bridge or sleeping in the park or uh, just at yeah. the beach or like di different places. And so that's why I didn't, I, I didn't sleep in a bed much. Mm -hmm. And uh, another part of it, like I, I, I was in prison. And so being in prison for so long, like you, you don't have beds in prison. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like that's where like I got used to sleeping in a hard floor. Uh, so whenever I can't just put this in context, mm -hmm. you're 16 years old yes. and you've spent already spent time in prison. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. A good bit of your life. Yeah. Yeah. From 10, uh, pretty much from 10 to 16. So oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Frankly. Yeah. So, uh, not all at once, right. def different times, but literally 95% of 10 to 16, I spent there in, uh, in prison, uh, in El Salvador. So yeah. So that's kind of how I came with all that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And into yeah. a family that were trying to love me, trying to yes. take care of me, but I was the one that didn't know how to receive yeah. it. Sure. I was the one that like it was, yeah, just a street guy that doesn't know sure. what love is, doesn't know what feelings are, doesn't know what like literally nothing else but anger and sadness uh, feels like. And so uh, that ended up, like I ended up leaving the place. Like I ran away because I was hurting the, the family instead of helping them. And so uh, I got homeless at that time, and I was homeless for about four or five months, five to six months in Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, and that, so in Dallas, Texas, I was like that. And then on 2015, this huge ice, ice break happened. I don't know if it happened here or not, but it got, I mean, it got tough. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I had never been, I, I didn't know what snow was. I, I have never seen the snow before. Oh my goodness. I've never seen ice Jesus. literally dripping off the, the sky. Yeah. So whenever I saw that, I was like, what in the heck is happening in here? Yeah. <laughs> like, it was so crazy that I had never been in a Walmart. The first time that I walked into a Walmart, I was like, literally, I went through the door. Like, so I came up to it and the glass doors were right, like open. And I was like... What in the heck is happening here? <laughs> oh just yeah, so I went through the doors and then I saw uh, Walmart. Yeah. And like having food, clothes, everything in there. I was like, am I in the same world or am I in a different wow. world? I had to walk out of Walmart, look outside, like looked at, looked at the front wall, like looked at the parking lot and everything. I was like, Am I in the same world or oh. like, is there like a transition? Like I thought I was crazy, like wow. in a minute, because I've never seen that. Never and seen I feel anything like, yeah. like that. And people in here, like, I I mean, I saw people just literally walking, little kids just walking in and out of the of the Walmart, like nothing. Yeah. And I was like, that is so crazy because I grew up completely the whole opposite of it. Right. Like okay. I grew up pretty much in the jungle. So, okay. yeah, so that, that part, of, and just that in itself, it was so much. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so... So yeah, so um, just a shock. Yeah, to yeah. The the world that you were in, mm -hmm. then you're just experiencing all different kinds of shocks. So you've yeah. been through trauma. Yeah, and then you've tried to live in a family. Yeah, and that wasn't working because mm -hmm. you needed some transition. You mm -hmm. needed some help. You needed yeah. some healing. Yeah, and then so now it gets really cold, and we've got a yeah. nice storm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're in awe of the Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so, so I was. I mean, I was homeless at that time. I oh there gosh. is a park uh, that I was that I was sleeping at, and like I mean, in here I didn't know that if you sleep at, at a park, like you can't. The police oh, they come okay. and uh, like if it's past midnight okay. or eleven, depending on the time that the park is closed, they come and and kind of kick you, you out. Okay. Yeah. And so I didn't know that go. until I got oh. removed uh, by a police officer. I was kind of trying to sleep already. And uh, 
this police officer came and he's like, hey man, like, I'm sorry, but you gotta go. And I'm like, okay, so I can't even sleep in a park oh. in here. So I had to, I got used to sleeping under the bridges because the, under the bridges, nobody really like okay. uh, bothers you or anything. So that time I was sleeping under a bridge and then this cold just start happening. And then like it starts snowing and then like little snow, snow, snow. And it's like the degrees are going down, down, down. And it got to like 10 degrees or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't have really like nothing to cover myself with. And so I got super cold to the point that like, I was like, all right, I'm, I've never felt like this. I like, I feel like I'm gonna just die right here. And at this point I had met already a family that were fostering one of my friends that was in the same gang that I was in it. And so I had met them, like the kindest, kindest people. And like, I knew that whenever I met them, there was something different about them. I didn't, like, we didn't spoke the same language because they, they were, they are Americans. So uh, they are Christians. I didn't know that they were Christians. I just knew that they were different. Mm-hmm. Something about them was different. And so I knew that they were kind people because they were fostering and treating the right way. My friend that it was, literally same background as me. And so I, that they, their house came to my mind as I was like in this freeze cold. And so I sneak into their house. <laughs> oh my goodness. I sneak into their house. You're in Dallas. So I mean, I get lost with a GPS and here you are 16 years yeah. old, you're freezing mm-hmm. and you make your way. Yeah. I've never home. used a, I've never used a GPS. Never well, in my life. So Okay, yeah. I guess you have an angel that <laughs> right. just got guides you. Around. you. Like I yeah. got you. Come on, Franklin. Yeah, yeah. So, so Holy Spirit leads you to this house. Literally. I didn't okay. know it at that time, but now I look back and he was. Now yeah, you know. yeah. He wow. he protected me and so okay. he led me there and uh I sneak into that house and I went to the second floor and there is like these three bedrooms. Right, empty. Just mm-hmm. I could have took any of them, but I wasn't used to sleeping in a bed to where like I saw the couch. And first of all, I was like, I don't want to just go and sleep in one of the rooms because what if somebody comes up? So I hid my stuff between furnitures and then I slept, I put myself under the couch, which I mean, literally like it's like this much room between the floor and the couch. And that's where I, I put myself and I slept right there. And I did that the first night. I left literally like five in the morning. I walked out and then I I left. And then the next night, did it again. And then the next night, I did it again. I did it for a week and a half. And they didn't find out until one night. I was coming up to the room, walking up the stairs. Somebody flipped the light. And I was like, I looked down. I was literally paralyzed. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I didn't speak English. They didn't spoke, uh, they didn't speak Spanish. So I used to start yelling like, no police, no police, please, no police. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lady, she's like, Franklin? And like, she's like, what are you doing here? (laughs) And I'm like, no police, no police. And like, I was like, me, like, and just trying to tell her that I would grab my stuff and leave, right? But like, no police, because like, I didn't want to get in trouble. right? And so she just called, like calls uh, her husband. And I was like, oh man, this is about to give bad <laughs> because I'm literally breaking yeah. into a house in the middle of the night. Yeah. Like they don't know me that well. Like I don't know them that well. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so all they know is that I, that I was in the gangs and that I, that I'm a terrible kid. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I'm expecting the husband to come with a shotgun and just literally like put it in my face and shot. Right. Because in the movies, that's what it happens. So uh, he comes out and he looks at me and he's like, Franklin, <laughs> I'm like, oh man, and then he's like, come to the office. I was like, oh gosh, all right, well, like I guess I'm going to prison. And mm-hmm. so that was the first thing I was, I was just sitting in the chair shaking and I was like, all right, I'm just waiting for the police to come through the door and I'm going back to prison. And so they call a friend that spoke Spanish and, and English to translate for us. And they literally like, I mean, and they are being super kind, not like no mad at all, like literally just wondering what's wow. going on. Right. And so they like this friend come up and like they start translating. And so I start telling them the reason why I'm there and everything. And they were like, okay, okay. At this point, they, there is a ministry that they were about to launch. And this ministry is for literally myself, for mm. kids that have been in my position, <laughs> that are in my position. And so they are like, 
okay, like, well, we're up this ministry's lunch and in two months, uh, I'm sorry, in three months, and literally it's for you. So, I mean, I didn't know English, so I he translated it. I understood that I was going to go to a placement where there's a lot of rules. I never follow rules, but the rules from the gangs, which you pretty much, hey, you just stay away from this, otherwise you get killed. So not really like, you don't really right. have rules. You right. know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so at this point I was like, all right, the only thing that I saw it was I have two months to be like, not to worry about anything and then I can leave. Wow. Right, like two to three months before I got to this placement. Okay. So that happened and the three months came by and then it starts raining. Just literally rain for like six weeks. Oh my gosh. And then they couldn't close the like do everything that they needed to do in the in this uh house because it's a house to where like they would be ready to open in those three months. So he literally pushed it back. And this time they push it back, it gave me the time to where like get got to know the family more and everything. Yeah. And so they ended up adopting me. So I know that there is like, there is a lot in, in there that like, sure. is not being shared, but I ended up getting adopted. Like we don't have the whole day to like, yeah. right, to like be shared, but Thank ended you. up being adopted by them. And uh, now they are my family. Now that's why the last name Hodge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's what you Thanks call, that's mom God. and dad to you. Yeah, yeah, that's they are my family. So anytime that I talk about my family is them. I have three brothers, uh, three beautiful nephews about to have a, a niece. Yay. Uh, and so, yeah, so I have two, uh, sister-in-laws and now I have a fiance, beautiful woman that <laughs> has literally, God has blessed me like I, in such a big way. Like That's I could, there's no wonderful. words to describe how much he has blessed me, not wow. just with everything, but by placing my fiance in oh. my life because she literally like kind of directs. The yeah. boat. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I start that's like going. Thing. Yeah, I start that, going. That, that's that's what they all do. <laughs> frankly, that they, they, they direct the boat. And, okay, sweet, sweet. Yeah, yeah so we really are right better track. together. No yeah. doubt about it. So that's going to be a good thing for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, literally. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm so amazed mm -hmm. that at God's goodness. Yes. I mean, to go from having nothing mm -hmm. and being homeless yeah. without a family yeah. to now you have a large family yeah, full yeah. of love yeah. and you're not homeless anymore. Nope. You haven't been homeless. Yeah. I, I So from that point on that you met the Hodge family, mm -hmm. then they really took you in and yes. that began your journey yeah. of healing, yeah. recovery mm -hmm. and redemption. So now you went to school, right? Yes. So yes. then you went into the school yeah. system, school, yeah. graduated at yes. what age? So I graduated high school at 20. Is, yeah. Oh, wow. Which is yeah. amazing. Wow. It's kind of late. <laughs> no, no, no. Because you started not knowing English. <laughs> yes, at, yes at that's true. 16, yes. 17, right? Yeah, yeah, at this point. Yeah. yeah, I was a freshman at 17. Yeah, so, a freshman wow. in high school yeah, at so 17. I was literally a classroom with the like 13, 14, 14 <laughs> 15 years old. Oh. That literally like, it, I'm, I have like this whole gang mentality. Right. right? Like I have the mentality of like 20 something years old. Okay. No, of a... 14 years old that right. all they think is like, oh, I want to go back home, play video games, and I want to go and yeah. do all these little things, right? Like, and so I'm in high school and I'm fighting every single day, oh. literally every single yes. day, <laughs> which is now I look back and I, every time I tell my mom, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know I was lost. I was, oh. <laughs> I was dumb. I was like, you know, like I was young and dumb. So I am so sorry because she had to go so many times to the principal Aww. principal office to pick Franklin up because he had he had, he was in a fight. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was so like lost and so I had so much anger. Sure, yeah. well, of course you yeah. would, yeah. right? Yeah. With your whole I, life and everything that you, yeah. you just have rage inside yeah. of you all the time. Yeah, literally yeah. to where like, I mean, me fighting a, a classmate or a professor or like a officer wasn't a difference. I was, wow. it was just like the size difference and that's it. So, wow. yes. I just so honor your <laughs> mom and dad yeah. that they could love you so right. well yeah. and love. And I mean, that truly shows that they have the love of the father in them, Literally, yeah. that they could love you so unconditionally mm -hmm. well. And then to just see that as you were just 
loved on in that atmosphere of love. Yeah. It gave you an opportunity then to begin to see the fruit of the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit yeah. and to really see the expression of the love of Jesus mm-hmm. Christ through people. And yeah. it was his love mm-hmm. that yeah. wrapped around you yeah. that helped you to be healed and put you on track. Mm-hmm. But it still took a while for you to get saved. And yeah. can you tell us about that? When that came, when you came to that point of receiving Jesus, mm-hmm. that your life began to turn around? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I was 17 whenever I got adopted. Okay. Right. And so from 17, this happened in 2015. So from the end of 2000, yeah, 2015 or end of 2014, something like that. Mm-hmm. I It's been so long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but from that time all the way to 21, like I've been in a Christian mm-hmm. bubble. I've been like in the, like seeing how like my family, and that's one of the things that honestly like God's timing is, that's where like I know that God's timing is perfect. Regardless yes. of where you are, what like how long it feels or like you feel like it's an eternity. God just has you, has you in a moment of like practicing uh, patient. So... Mm-hmm. Like that's all he does, right? Like his timing is perfect. And I like, I've been, I have been seeing God, right? Throughout the way that my family mm-hmm. lives it because they literally live the gospel mm-hmm. like to me. And the one thing that is like, so uh, like, a, like is it, it was an important point in my life is that we are adopted into the into the Christian family, right? That's right. And yes. so like we're adopted, we become adopted by God. That's right. And so I didn't see how like the timing that I became a Christian, uh, that it took me to become a Christian, it was just perfect because I didn't accept it. That I didn't felt like I was really like part of a family mm-hmm. until literally a uh, little bit after I became a Christian. And wow. so the time before, even though I was part of a family, even though like I... I had the last name or whatever, or like I came into a, a restaurant and like I was part of their table, yes. that didn't make me uh, part of the family, right? And okay. so uh, for the longest, I was like, okay, like I, I don't understand this adoption part of it. Like I feel like you're always gonna uh, push me. Like I feel like whenever you really find out who I am, mm. you will push me away, right? And so I feel like that's how we see God. A lot of the time wow. we see God of like, OK, I'm a Christian. I'll come to church. I'll do all these things that a Christian do that I was doing with the family. But I can't really tell you everything that I have done or like everything mm-hmm. that I that I, that, 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 that has been done mm-hmm. to me. Otherwise, you're going to push me away mm-hmm. in the same way. Like we see God. Right? And wow. so like it's really it good. Was, it, was, it was really, really good. like that with the family, God helped me and he helped me understood what adoption really meant and that whenever you're adopted you are chose and you are wanted and you are loved not depending on what have you what you have done or like depending on you or like literally it's not about you but being adopted is about them choosing you right and that's what like i got to understand really it took me six years to understand what adoption really was so whenever I understood what adoption was, it, ha- it had literally happened right after I became a Christian. So wow. me, like whenever I start reading the word and I start seeing this word adoption, adoption, and how much God loved me and all yes. this kind of stuff, I start putting the two together, like of like, <laughs> okay, my parents, I have done all this to them. I have treated them like this. And whenever I came to them and told them that everything that it was going on, they loved me. They wow. didn't judge me. They leaned into me. They yes. hurt with me. They yes. literally like, they, yeah, it's just the way that God treats us, right? Yeah. And so like that helped me so much to understand yes. the love of God and to understand who God was. And so that being said, like I had been like this into the family, yeah. but I didn't become a Christian until 2021. Uh, and that's whenever 2021 hit and it was pretty hard because I mean, coming out of, uh, uh, COVID season yes. and everything. And so uh, I was literally with without hope. And so I had lost hope. Uh, so I went from having nothing to having everything. Okay. And, um, but just having everything, like, as I said before, like world mm-hmm. status doesn't, like I thought that was what it was gonna heal the pain, the, all the anger mm-hmm. that I had inside. But if anything, it made it worse because I wanted to be known, mm-hmm. but no, like I wanted to be seen, but not known. Right. Gotcha. And that's what like, 
uh, that's where like I start being recognized a lot in places that I went and everything and people would say like, oh, Franklin, like you're this great man and everything, but they didn't know that inside I was messed up and I was lost and I was just sad, angry and like with yes. us, with trauma and everything. Yes. Yeah, because I might just add, and this is a part of your story, because mm -hmm. at this point you're a successful MMA fighter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got drafted by the MMA mm -hmm. and you were you were brought in, you'd had several successful fights and you yeah. were moving up in the rankings. Yeah. I mean, you were making money and yeah. you, you were doing a lot of great stuff. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, as I said, like I, uh, in, the, I, in the world's eyes, I was uh, a very successful, successful person that, hey, you have, you're making money, you have all this, you have family, you have everything that the world, like said, calls success. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you shouldn't be hurting, right? Mm -hmm. But that's, that's the thing, like if, like just because you have everything or like if you don't have anything and you think that like getting to that status, like it's gonna give you everything and it's gonna make you, uh, give you this happiness and this love that you have always wanted or that, that, empty is going to fulfill that empty spot. Let me tell you, don't waste your time and don't go, don't go towards that. Like just literally what you need is God. That's right. <laughs> that's fulfill right. your heart with the word. That's, that's what, right. that's what that gap that you have inside is, is, is the word. It like, that's where the God, the, that's where the word is hidden mm -hmm. in yes. us. And so, yeah. So I, that season, uh, it was tough January 18th. It was mm -hmm. one uh, one of the times that I attempted to to kill myself, and uh, I had and, attempted and it. One of the times, yeah, you attempted yeah. it a few times before, mm -hmm. but this this yeah. time you took it to another level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had attempted uh, attempted it before, and it didn't work out. And so this time, and, and uh, why didn't it work out? Uh, God, 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 God intervened literally, every yeah, time, right? Yeah, the angels of God, literally, because <laughs> one of the times I tried in the car. I was in the car, I was coming back from Regeneration, which is a recovery program uh, that a church in, in Dallas uh, offers. And we were going through inventory. And inventory, you literally like do inventory of like harms to you, harms by you, and just everything that like se uh, sexual uh, inventory, like everything, right? So you bring your 2%, All that stuff. Yeah, you open the Pandora box. Mm -hmm. And so I was driving back and I was like, I'm, I'm done. I'm not gonna do it. And I hit a speed and I let go of the steering wheel. And which was so crazy. This is like, you gotta think that I was so bad for doing this. I was on the phone with my mom because mm -hmm. I was in a way, excuse me, telling her bye. And I was on the phone with my mom and hit a speed, let go of the, uh, the st a steering wheel and a drunk driver hit me behind. And I spin, spin, spin and it was a whole wreck, but that was one of the times before. And that's where like the angel, <laughs> literally yes. that was like the angels of God were just like surrounded Cause you walked me. away from that. Yeah, yeah, I was, like I came out of it. I had a hit in my head, but it was just one of many and uh, my <laughs> knee. And so like it, nothing really happened. And it was like, literally my car was, is crashed together. And so like, I was like, okay, that didn't happen. Like. It did it wasn't successful. And so on January 18, Monday, it was a Monday, regeneration happens on Mondays, mm. Monday night. So uh, I was again doing inventory and uh, it was just like inventory was asking me to talk about the times that I have been abused, mm -hmm. the times that I have hurt people, the times that I like everything that has been done to me and things that I said that I would never sp spoke about. And so there was like, it just brought all these different feelings that I have never felt. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I mean, I, I didn't have hope no more. And I was just out, I just wanted out and grabbed the gun. Uh, and I mean, being in the games, like I have worked with guns since I was 10 years old. So like, I know how to work a gun. I can put a gun like with my eyes closed together and take it apart at the same time. And so grabbed it and I was like, you know what? This is it, like I'm, I'm just tired of being here. Like it, I thought it was gonna get better, but if anything, it just has getting worse. But that's why my, that was my mentality. Mm -hmm. But God was like, Franklin, all I'm, I, all I'm asking is for you to do this. Right. Yeah. But I was scared of doing this because every yeah. time, like the times that I went like this, I got sexually abused oh, and I got physical Jesus. abuse and I got mentally abused. Yeah. Right. And, and by this, you mean you open, just opening up, opening yourself up, yeah. trusting, yeah. Yeah. trusting, giving yourself mm -hmm. all in, yeah. going all in. Every time yeah. you went all in, you were abused or rejected mm -hmm. or yeah. hurt. And here, or God, and here God's asking you to go all in. And you're yeah. like, I, I don't know how I can do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so like, because at this point, it wasn't no more like 
with people. It wasn't no more of like needing things. Right. It was inside, mm-hmm. right? And so that's where like, I was like, I, I can, I can leave you. I can, yeah, I can let, let you be in the driver's seat mm-hmm. because I'm in control, mm-hmm. right? And that's where like God is like, and I feel like that's where a lot of Christians are at the time. Mm-hmm. Like uh, there's a lot of Christians that like uh, have been Christians like the whole life, but we're in the driver's seat. And that's not how it rolls, right? Like the in order for God, like you ask the question, like how much, like what, what is that, like what can God do, or like mm-hmm. what, like what is impossible what, for, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, what is there anything impossible for God, right. right? And the question, like the answer is like no, there isn't, but He has to be in the center. That's, that's right. right. Like because He, if He's not in the driver's seat, then you're gonna have a lot of wrecks, just <laughs> as I did. Right. But whenever He's in control. Man, you're just along for the ride. That's and, right. Yeah, and you're, you're going to go to, I mean, so many great places, yeah. right? And so that's what he was asking me. He was like, Franklin, you're tired, man. Like, you've been driving for so long to where, like, you need to, you need to just sit there mm-hmm. and watch and just relax, take a nap, like, right? Like, just in, in a road trip. He wanted trip. to take care yeah, of you. Yeah, literally. He and had so, compassion mm-hmm, for you. Yeah. But to even to receive God's compassion, we have to choose to allow mm-hmm. yeah. Him to give us His compassion, to receive yeah. that compassion. Yeah. And where it is that you felt vulnerable, mm-hmm. and so you were resisting yeah. feeling vulnerable yeah. even with God yeah. because of your history. Mm-hmm. So in this moment then, yeah. you... Yeah. yeah, so right there, all He was asking... Is for me to trust them, and I didn't want it to, and so I will. I didn't see any other way out, and so I grabbed the gun, put it in my face, and uh, like I put it in the side of my head and pulled the trigger without thinking about it. Literally, I didn't think twice about it. I just grabbed it, put it in my face, boom, and like I, I didn't even close my eyes. I was just like literally just did it, and it didn't. There was no bullet. Like <laughs> it didn't go through. Right, and I knew that I had like yeah. loaded it, like I did everything, right? And then like I grabbed it, I looked at it, which I know if you carry God, like look at it to a barrel. Yeah, you're not, supposed, like, to, you're not yeah. supposed to look in the barrel yeah. to see if there's a bullet never. in there. You yeah, don't do never. that. Yeah, never. So, but that's how, but that's yeah. how much I wanted out. That like right. I even look at the barrel and see if the the bullet was right there and would just like somehow come out and still hit me. And so I took the magazine out, and then it was, I mean, it was loaded, and then put it back in. And then I didn't even load it this yeah, time. Yeah, you didn't ratchet. Yeah, I just like put it back in and then put it down, open the door, put it down, and then pull the trigger. And a bullet went through it. It fired. Oh, yeah, Jesus. it fired up. And as soon as that bullet went through it, Jesus. I got hit in here. and Hitting your heart. Yeah, literally. And that's, I mean, as I said earlier, like I've been shot, I've been stabbed, I've been beat up almost to death, and the pain didn't compare to none of that. And to the point where like I, I couldn't control my body and my body just leaned forward and just started crying and crying and crying. Grabbed the gun and just placed it on the floor of the car and like just <laughs> cry and wept. And then I called a friend uh, from Watermark Church and I told him like the whole situation and that I needed help. And then he told me that to go to an event that it was happening. So this is uh, uh, January 18th. and. He was like, hey, the, at the end of uh, of this month, there's an event for young adults. Come with us. And I was like, sure, if I'm alive, I'll make it. And so came to this event. And at this event, this young adult came literally the last session, right? And I came to the event with the mentality of like, God, if you don't, if you have something for me, show me. Otherwise, I'm going back. And I was already planning the way that I was going to take myself out. Like I would, because I was like, okay, I tried everything doesn't work. I know something that is going to work Jesus. and I'm going to do it for sure because I want out. Right. And so I was kind of like in a way testing God, mm-hmm. if, if you would say it. And so went to this event and the last speaker came and this guy and I have nothing in common. Right. Like, first of all, he's a white guy, uh, <laughs> grow up, uh, no, no, uh, not needing anything, having everything and having a loving family and everything. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, like nothing in common. But he starts literally, like, from the moment that he gets at the stage, he gets the microphone and just, like, laughing. Like, just, like, a smiling, <laughs> this huge smile that just so much joy, 
right? And the, like the light shining on him and everything <laughs> that I'm like, who's this dude? Like literally I, as he's sharing his testimony, he's just like full of joy yeah. and just sharing and sharing like, oh, this is what God has done in there, blah, blah. Towards the end of the testimony, whenever he said that like how he was transformed, mm. that pain that I felt two mm. weeks before came back. And that's where I just started crying and crying. And he saw me crying because we, like, we were locked. Like, wow. he's, he knew that I was watching him, and I knew that he, he saw me. Yeah. And so, uh, like, I started crying, and then the, at the end of the session, we ended up uh, being able to talk to the point to where, like, we got our uh, phone numbers. And then uh, after that, like, we connected, and we talked on the phone for, like, three hours. Oh, like, wow. me just sharing with him my testimony. And he's like, uh, are you ever done? And I'm like, Hold on, and like just yes. literally like throwing up like everything oh, that I had wow. that I had happened to myself, and he's like, okay, they're like we gotta meet up, and so I'm like, yeah. okay, so we meet up, and then he tell like I'm telling him like he he we meet up, and he's like, hey, when did you attempted it? And I was like, January 18. And he starts laughing, and he's like, January 18, huh? It's a Monday. I'm like, yes, sir. And he's like, that day I prayed for anybody who was trying to commit suicide, that whatever way it wouldn't work out. And he's like, I don't normally pray for that. The only reason that I prayed, which he was like, it was kind of weird that God put it in my heart, but God put it in my heart and I prayed for it. And so he didn't know that across the city, there was some, his prayer, it was healing. It was gonna heal somebody. That's right. Literally, with the, we didn't know at all. That's right. And that's why like now that God, anytime that God's put out, like something in my mind to pray for, I obey and I pray because I don't I don't know who's right. I pray for. You right. know what I mean? Right. But right. the the word says that like a prayer of a righteous man, I God will hear it. So yeah. Yes. And so like yeah, like he prayed Amazing. and and that's kinda like I love that's why I love prayer. Because yes. like that's what it got me here. You yes. know what I mean? I mean not just that, of course, but like sure. that that prayer of that righteous man yes. is what he kept the gun from firing up whenever mm-hmm. it was in my face. That's and right. so we met and <laughs> Grant Trial, that's that's his name. We met and then from then, like we literally met every Thursday. And he first thing that he did introduced me into community. Good. First thing. Literally like we met Good. and then introduced me into community. And then he starts he made this list of all the verses, like the bridge illustration, right? And he didn't come and he was like, Okay, this is the the gospel, like Let's go through it. No, he yeah. he wrote down these verses and he made me memorize the verses. Come on. And then I was like, okay, like <laughs> um, we're memorizing verses. And then down he wrote like, okay, we're going to practice the bridge illustration. I was like, bridge illustration? I don't know what that is, but cool. And so he didn't, like, I feel sometimes we first uh, like share the bridge illustration with people and then like we just do that and then they become Christians and we just leave it. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. but I'm not saying that that's wrong. It's not at all. Like sometimes because of the lack of time, sure. we, we can't just sit there and like, sure. right. make, like make the memorize, sure. right? And so, but he helped me memorize and then he's like, okay, this is the bridge illustration. And so whenever he put it all together, I was like, what in the heck? Yeah, I'm a sinner, right? Like I'm messed up, I need help and I'm broken and I need of a savior. That's right. Amen. And so then he's like, the wages of sin, for the wages of sin is death, Romans uh, 6, 23, right? And like, but, and he, so he helped me, like he didn't have to really like focus on that part because I knew that I was messed up he and knew I knew that, that I decided to, to be yeah. to be dead. Yes. He didn't need yeah. to convince you that you <laughs> had a past. Yeah, literally. <laughs> like that part was easy. And then he went, but the, the gift of God yeah. is eternal life through Jesus Christ, right? And so I was like, cool, like I get that. But then the part that it was locking me back from God, it was that everything that I have done, mm. it was, I wouldn't have been forgiven. And then he shared Romans 8-1 with me. And he's like, therefore, now there is no more, con- there is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ that's or right. Christ Jesus, uh-huh. whatever translation, Frank's right. translation, that's what it said. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, he shared that with me and I was like, okay, condemnation, what it means. And he went on and, and explained it to me. And so he's like, to put it in your words, Whatever you have done, you are forgiven. And there is no more, like, God is not going to come back and throw it at you or, like, bring it up to you. It is literally gone. Forever. Okay, yeah, amen. forever. And I was like, 
what you're telling me that the guy that is asking me to be in the driver's seat not only would take care of like the four flat tires that I have, but he's gonna literally like, I'm gonna have warranty forever. And like, I don't have to- <laughs> That's a long, great example. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have to longer worry about those four tires and he's not gonna say, I told you not to drive them to right. those nails that were that's there, right. right? And so that's like, right. he, he explained that and that's where like, it was literally like a light bulb, like into my mind. And he just turned on and I was like, great, I'm safe. And great. then I, he started discipling me and he was there. I mean, I wish I could say like, oh, after that it was just like, everything right. sun and shines and <laughs> yeah. flowers gentle and, breeze yeah, yeah exactly and, no <laughs> it's like literally it's a the, journey yeah it's texas right so you <laughs> never know you never know what you're gonna get like sometimes yep. you may get you may wake up and it's gonna yep. be snowing outside and the middle of the day is gonna be sunny and then at night time it's gonna be go. thunderstorm yeah so yeah so i mean he walked with me through the whole journey like uh there was times that like i would literally call him and I would be like, dude, I'm, I went out. Like my mm -hmm. gun is in the dashboard, I went out. Like, and like after me understanding yeah. that, that I, yes. I, I have been forgiven, yes. but the enemy was still like there, mm. was still right there because I hadn't, I had in a way come to, uh, come to a point where like I understood and I was kind of healed. I was, mm -hmm. I was in a safe place, but I mm -hmm. wasn't healed. Mm -hmm. From the go. uh from the from all the the the, all the hurt. Trauma. Yeah, all yes. the trauma, all the like all those wounds, up yes. wounds. Right. And so I had to speak about it. And so like yes. he began to like ask me, okay, so what's going on? What makes you think what is the what are the lies that the devil is putting in your heart? I was like, Oh, easy, like all this, 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 this. Like I'm rejected, I'm unwanted, I'm like abandoned, abandoned, I'm abused, I'm just, I'm used, mm -hmm. I'm in love, I'm all this, right? Mm -hmm. I gave him the whole list mm -hmm. and he was like, all right, now, like with all each of those lies, put a truth next to it. That's right. Right, because the devil is always going to attack you with the same exact lies, except, yes. like exact, ex the same exact lies, mm -hmm. like every single time, mm -hmm. right? And so I was like, cool. And the other thing that he's like, Okay, we're gonna wear the armor of God mm -hmm. twenty four seven. That's right. Because it's like you and I, we gotta be uh, ready to for a battle That's every right. single day. He's like, if you're a soldier, you're not gonna go up to the battlefield just literally with jeans and a t shirt and just chilling. Right? Right. You're gonna kill. You're gonna get killed right away. Right. So you wanna go, uh, like full geared up. Uh, yeah, gear up, loaded, and everything. And so he's like, so we're gonna. Pray the armor of God every Good. single day, Ephesians 6, 8, 10 through 20. I was like, cool. So we would pray that every single time, every single time. And that was that's the foundation of, of my beliefs. Like wow. is the armor of God. Like mm -hmm. every single day that I wake up, I gotta get in my knees. That's right. And I gotta pray. And I gotta pull I gotta put the armor of God that's and right. to to start the day. Otherwise, it's gonna be a wreck. That's Otherwise, right. I'm gonna get killed. That's yeah, right. And so you live that, yeah. And you're done with that. You yes. were done with that. Yes. So then, to know that there was a different way to live, mm -hmm. you had to do something different. Exactly. Exactly. And then yeah. you took proactive action mm -hmm. yeah. in your Christian life yeah. to develop new disciplines in mm -hmm. your life so yeah. that you could learn how to be victorious mm -hmm. over that. And so not only was it just the the hurt, but then even the spiritual realm yeah. that um, the kingdom of darkness was mm -hmm. even opposing you. And so even beginning to shed the light yeah. of truth yeah. that, okay, now I recognize what the lies are mm -hmm. and I don't have to believe those, yeah. and which I think is so powerful mm -hmm. because it's the truth truth yeah. that sets us free. Amen. And so as you're learning and knowing the truth, mm -hmm. the discipline of that you were not casual mm -hmm. about seeking your freedom, yeah. you were very deliberate and proactive mm -hmm. that, okay, great. I, I can't even imagine to think, because I've been a, a Christian for the majority of my life, and I was raised in church, and to know the armor of God, you know, oftentimes we were just raised in VBS, yeah. you put yeah. on the armor of God. So when you're recognizing that if I don't put on the armor of God, I am not equipped. I'm yeah. a sitting duck. Yeah, literally. And it seems like you were tired of being the sitting duck. Mm -hmm. And so you had to do something different. Yeah. And in that, you got empowered with the Holy Spirit yeah. as you were filled with the truth. And yeah. that became, that began to conform you mm -hmm. 
into the image of God, yeah. the Imago Dei. Yeah. And in that place, you began to find empowerment. You began to find healing mm-hmm. you, through the compassion of Jesus yeah. Christ yeah. and through friendship, yeah. which I think that is just so amazing too, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Franklin, because you brought it up earlier that this friend um, brought you into community. Yeah. And then he didn't just leave you there. He Mm-mm. continued to disciple yeah. you and to yeah. meet with you. Yeah. So how important would you say it is to be a part of the community or the body of Christ or be a part of a church family? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, I, that's one of the things that like, I encourage all my friends to like, it don't matter where you are, like what church, how big the church is, how small the church is, or like if you don't have uh, a church, a, a home church, like be part of one get connected mm-hmm. wherever you are get connected in a church and if you have a church and you already have community be authentic with them because a lot of the times we can have community but if we're not being authentic it's like we don't have mm-hmm. none and so yeah like so he introduced me to that community and uh that was literally like now i'm in the transition of moving back into texas right and so that's one of the things that i'm honestly struggling with because i'm not only moving back to texas and the transition of moving back to texas but i'm in a tr- transition of moving towns therefore mm. like i'm in a transition of moving into a new church yeah. and the town that i'm moving to is pretty small so it doesn't have uh, a big community i honestly don't have a community in that town so okay. that's something that i'm honestly praying through and i'm kind of struggling because community in my life is like huge yes. you like discipleship is yes. huge because yes. that's what it literally got me through it yes. like if if grant would have been there or like all the other guys mm-hmm. that helped like the yes. were in my community and my circle at that time would have been there yeah. i wouldn't be here because yeah. there were so many times i mean there was time that i called grant and he was like like in Miami or like in Florida or like in yeah. Kentucky or somewhere like doing something else. And then he would be like, all right, cool that you call me, but let's call this other person and you got to get to them. Mm-hmm. And I would be okay, cool. Like I don't, I don't depend on you. And this is where like it's tricky as well, because we can easily be depending on a person as mm-hmm. we become new believers. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's, that's wrong, right? Like that's we shouldn't okay. depend on a person because the word says and Psalm says that like, we shouldn't trust humans. Not right. in the way of like, oh, I shouldn't trust you, right. but I, we shouldn't depend on humans right. because we're we're broken. We right. are old in the need of a savior, and that's mm-hmm. the, what that's what we have in, in common. As mm-hmm. as as Christians, the only thing in common is that we were broken in the need of a savior, and that's the only yeah. reason why we're here, yeah. right? And so, um, like, he helped me with that as well. He's like, hey, cool that you call me, but first of all, have you gone to God? Come on. And I'm like, oh, Come no, I mean, like right now. I'm thinking I just need of, a quick fix. I, yeah. just, I, just, I just need you to literally, hit me. Literally, it. yeah. Like it's, it's just tough to talk to yourself, right? Like I'm like, I'm here sitting by myself and I'm being attacked. So how am I going to talk to God if I'm being attacked, right? And so like, he's like, no, but that's the thing. That's, yes. how, you, that's how you fight your battles. Come and he's on. Like, he would always ask me, have you talked to God? Have you given your knees? Oh. I definitely hadn't done those. So oh. like I would like in a way oh. I'm like, dude, I, I need help. Like don't tell me what to do. I need help. <laughs> right. But on. that's that's in a lot of times that's what God says. Like that's hey, right. before coming to me, like just with this whole list, uh-huh. like poster, right? Mm-hmm. Like the poster or heart poster that mm-hmm. we come to God is really important. And and Jeremiah twenty nine, uh, eleven through fourteen, mm-hmm. he goes into saying that he knows the plans that he has for us. But at the end of that the mm-hmm. phrase, it says that like when you hear, when you seek me, you're gonna find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Whole That's heart. right. So it meaning that like the posture of our heart, whenever we seek Him, has mm-hmm. like it matters. That's right. right? And so that posture matters yeah, so much. Yeah, literally. And so He helped me with that. He He would always like little things like that. He would always add up, like That's little good. by little. He didn't punish me with it. He didn't. He sure. didn't make me feel like. I was wrong by it or anything, but he he started like putting them in there. Yeah, like yeah. those Reminding little you. details. Yeah, and so he would say that, and he would be like, "Okay, call call JD." Mm-hmm. Um, and so I would call JD, and I would go, and I mean, so like that community really helped me, really Good. stood right there for me, Good. right, and they helped me in times of a storm. They helped me, Good. and they were with me. They were next to me. They helped me, like the times that I fall, like they helped me get up and everything. Right. They didn't fight for me. And that's one thing that like a lot of the times we expect community to fight for us, but they didn't. They fight with me. Wow. Right. And so they fought with that's me and good. that's what it really helped me because it, they were like, okay, like 
we're we're in here with you, but if you stop, we'll stop. Right. And so right, and so like it was like okay, great. Like I want it, I yes. want to get healed, of course. So yes. they they helped me a lot. And so community to me is like is literally like I live in community. I need yes. to live in community. I I need to live in the light, and that's why it's it's so cool that like. And we see in the New Testament, Jesus with the with the twelve disciples, mm-hmm. he never sent just one alone. That's right. right. He always sent them in pair. That's right? right. Because he shows how much we need community. And then Proverbs, right. Proverbs twenty seven yes. seventeen, right? Yes. Like iron sharpen irons. Therefore, right. like a man is gonna sharp each other. That's right. right. And so um like that's literally telling us how much we need community. Yes. And how much because the devil, I mean, fits uh, first Peter five seven that the devil mm-hmm. is like a roaring lion waiting for anybody to devour right yes. and so I know that like I may not be getting every every word in the and and like on the verses but I'm summarizing you're everything you're, I'm, <laughs> you're I'm doing like, great I think you've got every I'm just word you've got, you've got it in you <laughs> yeah I'm just I'm just summarizing you're everything. doing great so. <laughs> it's perfect it's yeah, so, so good well I yeah. love that you're sharing that because community is important mm-hmm. but then too recognizing that community is not the idol yeah and we don't we're not called to make community an idol Mm-mm. God is God Amen. we need Jesus yeah. Christ yeah. Jesus Christ is the right. answer exactly. and so what I do appreciate about even just seeing this is that you they were sometimes we can want to fix Mm -hmm. yeah and that feels can feel even better even as a minister that can feel even more gratifying and Mm -hmm. satisfying like oh let me tell you let me bandage you up in a bunch of scriptures but what i have found is over my time in ministry (laughs) sometimes i could want something more for someone than they want for themselves Uh but if i try to impose then it's not going to be beneficial You have to decide what is it that you are wanting. Mm -hmm. And so when you were deciding, I want to be healed, Mm -hmm. I want to be free, well, you had the community around to join with you, Mm -hmm. but not to do it all for you. And in that, they kept pointing you to Jesus Mm -hmm. Christ. And then so let's say, were you then moving forward then? You begin. You're in community. Mm-hmm. You're walking this out. Mm-hmm. But then I also know that you were you. You mentioned crying out to the Lord, yeah. hitting your knees. Yeah. And it looks like, judging by your pants, it looks like you've been on your knees quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sure. so as you're on your knees, crying out to the Lord, then I mean, what kind of desperation is that? And what has Jesus done for you in those places that, gosh, we've got all the the body of Christ around God's. It definitely intervened, mm-hmm. but then you're here alone with God. Um, what else has He done Man. to carry you through to this? You've made it through this far. Most of us would say, if I if I can just say, I th- I think as Christians. When we begin to see victory and we begin to see that, gosh, I'm so much better and I have so much more freedom than I did, you know, when I was, you know, in that last season of my life. And then we feel so truly grateful and thankful that we could just say, I'm so good. And now we're we're good and we're going to set into a rhythm of, okay, we go to church, read our Bible, Mm -hmm. you know, do the things. But we're leaving something on the table that could be, we've got a rich inheritance and Jesus right. paid yeah. the full price yeah. for us to receive our full inheritance, complete healing, complete freedom, yeah, that's right. and complete redemption mm-hmm. that he doesn't even just leave us just as good as we were before. Nope. He leaves us better yeah. than we ever were. Yeah. And he, the scripture tells us in John 10, 10, that he <laughs> says, you know, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yep. So you obviously, you experience that. Mm-hmm. And Jesus is like, I'm so thankful that there is more to this story. Because mm-hmm. Jesus says, but I have come yeah. that you would have life and that you would have exactly. it to the full. Yeah. And so he wanted you to have the abundant life. Mm-hmm. So what I love is that you see the mercy and the grace of God all around mm-hmm. you and intervening on your behalf. Mm-hmm. Now you're in a safe place, surrounded with family, a community, but you're still crying out. Because mm-hmm. you need freedom yeah, from need PTSD. Yeah. You need this breakthrough. Yeah. And I know that it stood out to me that you were even just sharing with us that, you know, you were even on your knees before the Lord last mm-hmm. December. Can you yeah. just tell us about that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So that's one of the things that, like, uh, after finding freedom in my heart, 
right? Like there is a still like that's where I say like I thought become like becoming a Christian it isn't being a Christian it isn't easy, and that's like Scripture tells us that, yeah. right? And so therefore like we know that from the moment that we become Christians, it's gonna get tough, yeah. if anything, because the world is gonna be against us and is against us in every single way, and that's where. Uh, I thought about becoming a Christian, I was gonna, everything just magical uh -huh. was gonna be healed, right? But it's a process. Yeah. As we were talking early, like just James 1, yeah. uh, uh, 1 mm -hmm. to, uh, 2 to 5, it, it says that like trials, we're gonna have mm -hmm. trials, mm -hmm. but those trials are gonna produce perseverance and perseverance is gonna produce uh, character, character, right? But the word in there, the key word is joy, right? How we face all those things. Is, is with joy. We should mm -hmm. face them with joy. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Paul teaches on it all day long. That even whenever he's in prison in Philippians, mm -hmm. uh, in Philippians 2, he goes on to say that like, even in prison, he's going to rejoice, rejoice, mm -hmm. rejoice because the gospel is being shared. And so I said all that because like, we, I became a Christian and I started rejoicing. I started like having joy, right? But then trials start coming mm -hmm. and that's where like that joy went away. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, crap, I thought everything should be good, mm -hmm. right? As I mentioned earlier, but there was a lot of healing that needed to be happening. Mm -hmm. And I had tried uh, counselors. I had tried like therapists. I had tried so many things to be healed mm -hmm. and, and it didn't happen. And I mean, being, uh, as you mentioned earlier, like being in the M MMA uh, world, like I had seen so much and everything and I had tried so much uh, whenever I was in that uh, worldly status that like I tried to get healed. I mean, I had been trying to get healed from right. way before. Like, and that's the reason why I ended up trying to kill myself because like I had tried to be to get healed with so many. I tried so many things and it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, I knew that like if I was still like feeling it, if I was those thoughts were still coming, like those the PTSD was still there. I knew that nothing worldly was going to heal it. Mm -hmm. I knew that there was going to be something else. And at this point, I have read the, the scripture yes. enough to where, like, I knew that, hey, if anything, right, like, I have to come to God. Like, yes. Jesus is he's telling us, like, hey, come to me. Yes. I'm, the, I'm the truth. I'm the way. I'm yes. the life. Right. And so yes. I'm like, okay, I need the truth. I need a way and I need life. <laughs> right. So I'm that's like, right. if he's telling me that that's him, then I need to do it. And then I, at that time, I was studying David's. Um, David, yes. King David's life, right? Just the way that he lived it. Yes. Because I was like, okay, I relate. I picked two two uh, characters in the Bible that I relate the most, and it's uh, Paul and and David. And I was like, okay, David, what did David do any time that he was? Uh, because, I mean, David lived yes. a tough life. He right? did. Persecuted and... Like, I mean, everything. And yes. so... Made a few bad choices yeah. along the way on, yeah. on his own. On, his on own. the run. Yeah, messed it up He a lot. was homeless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, would have, he would have been my humble back then. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, so like I saw the way that he, 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 he battled things, right? Yes. In the midst of persecution, mm -hmm. he went into a cave and he didn't just like, like, I mean, he struggled with depression, with anxiety, mm -hmm. with loneliness. I mean, he clearly says that in Psalm yes. 42, everything, the way that he felt. But the first thing that he did, it was pray, cry out to mm -hmm. the Lord, right? And so that's where I was like, okay, if my homeboy David and my homeboy Paul, every time that they are feeling some type of way from their past, they go and cry out to the Lord, yes. then I need to do that, right? Come because on. I mean, Paul, Persecuted Christians. Yeah, killed Paul, them. Like, yeah, like did all these things. Right. But he goes on and saying on uh, 2 Corinthians 12, if I'm right, uh, he talks of this uh, log in the eye that he yes. prayed and prayed yes, for yes. and God didn't took it away, <laughs> right? And so, but he prayed. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's the key words in there, prayed, prayed, mm -hmm. prayed. Mm -hmm. And then in the armor of God, he says that like we put the full ar armor of God, but then at the, at the later on, it says, so you can pray. Right. And so like you literally wear all this armor mm -hmm. for nothing. You just wear it to defend yourself, like the Holy Spirit defending you. But what the way that we fight is by praying. Right. right? And so that's where I was like, okay, a scripture all day long is telling me that I need to pray and come to God and cry out to, to God and do whatever I need to do. Right. And that's one of the things that Grant uh, put it like, Grave into my heart. Mm -hmm. Hey, anytime, get in the closet, close the door, and scream. I got you need to, 
but I cry out to him, get on your knees. Yes. And I was like, all right, I'm to the point where I'm desperate. And that's one of the things, whenever you're desperate, you'll do whatever it mm -hmm. takes to get healed and to, so and to find healing and to find freedom. And I mean, that's kind of whenever we accept the gospel, right? That's whenever yes. we become Christians because we're, de we're desperate yes. of, uh, in, the, in the need of, uh, or, of yes. being safe or being healed. And yes. so that's whenever, yeah, in December, I, I was just done with, I had, had a, a PTSD session, uh, like through the night, I literally couldn't sleep because I had literally like a videotape of playing everything that I have done. And this is months ago, you know what I mean? Jesus. Like months yeah. ago, I'm on fire for the, for the gospel, pre yeah. like literally preaching the gospel everywhere I go. If I see dogs that speak, like I'm sharing the gospel <laughs> with them and everything. And so like, I'm, I'm sharing the gospel left and right. Yes. Right. So like yes. person, like yes. all my friends and, and their eyes is like, oh, Franklin got it. Yeah. Right. But at nighttime, that's where the enemy is attacking, mm -hmm. right? And okay. that's where, like, if the enemy can get you during the day, daylight, mm -hmm. he's gonna get you at nighttime Jesus. while you sleep in the darkness, right? Jesus. That's where, like, the Bible is telling us that the the, the devil is so sneaky mm -hmm. that he's gonna get you in the darkness, mm -hmm. as you say, uh, mm -hmm. John ten ten. Yeah. And so I was just literally like, I was tired, and I was like, God, I can't follow you. I can't keep doing all this because, in a way, I feel like I'm being fake. Mm. Because during the day I'm doing all this, but at nighttime I'm having all these PTSD. I'm having all these playbacks of like what I have done, what has been done to me, and everything from like years ago. Whenever I was in prison or like whenever mm. I was a little kid, so I need I need healing, mm -hmm. yes. right? And so yes. you are telling me to come to you. Matthew seven says, "Ask, ask seek, and knock, and you will yes. find." So I took that to heart, and I was like, "All right, I'm knocking. I'm not just knocking, but I'm banging on the door. Come I'm on. not just asking, That's but right. like I'm screaming, yes. right?" And so like, uh, so I got in my knees, and I just started literally bowling and just crying and like hitting in the floor and just crying and screaming like that. I needed help. I yes. needed help, and. I hit my head and the, the, don't do it, but I hit, <laughs> oh, no. you know, I was so desperate that like I hit it, I hit my head on the floor and mm -hmm. just like, like keep hitting my forehead and the, the carpet, mm -hmm. like, God, I need you, I need you. And like hands up and you're like, I need you to come heal me. Like the yes. same way that you have healed me from everything else, the same way that you have shown and you have come for me, I need you to come for me. Yes. And I know you can do it, I know you can do it. And that's the thing, like whenever you, you pray with a, with your heart posture and the right, like yeah. literally wow. coming to it and you're like exalting him, praising him and glorifying him yes. and acknowledging yes. that he's the Lord. Yes. Not just like little letter Lord, but like right. he's Jaira. Yes. Right? He's a provider. He's like Yahweh, like yes. the God that like came to Moses on uh, Exodus 34, yes. uh, six and seven that says that like the Lord came down and, yes. and, and revealed himself mm -hmm. to Moses, that God. Right, acknowledging the God that appeared, like the separated the seas, like yes. literally this God, acknowledging who I was praying to, Come you want to make that difference, yes. right? Like the one that like, it wasn't just like, all right, God, I'm here, help me. No, like it was like, hey, I know who you are. Mm -hmm. I know that you are a, a father, like a faithful Lord, a faithful Lord. I know that you can make anything happen yeah. if it's your will. Yeah, And so, I was like, I know that your will is for me to praise you, for me to glorify you, for me to exalt you, for me to like do Matthew 28, yes. uh, eight, uh, 19, to yes. make disciples of all nations. Yes. But I can't do it whenever I have this over here, right. like like hitting me on the side, whenever I have all this over here distracting me. Right. I don't know what is your deal. And I pray if it's the same that Paul had to where like that's not going to go away, I pray that you can heal me and that you can show me how to handle it, Good. right? Because if you're not gonna heal me from it completely, just show me how to handle it to where like it's not gonna uh, bother me again. Right. And like I like whenever he comes, show me the truth that I can put on it, right? Like and and I can I can keep it away. Yes. And I did. I I literally pray for like 15, 20 minutes, and excuse me, like I got up and then got back in bed. And I don't know if it was from crying so much or anything, but I slept and I didn't wake up until like six hours after or seven hours after. And <laughs> since then, I haven't had that PTSD back. That's so, amazing, praise Franklin. God. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. That is so yeah. amazing. Again, yeah. this is where I just want to just say, 
all things yeah. are possible with Amen. God. Amen. All things. Yeah. And when we're crying out to him, mm-hmm. he is right there because he does say, he mm-hmm. goes, when you call out to me, I will yeah. answer yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And so you are calling out to God yeah. and saying, God, I know who you are. Yeah. You're the God of the Bible. Amen. And what I love there <laughs> is that you are reading the word mm-hmm. because you know who God is yeah. as you've read yeah. the word, then we can take that to him and say, mm-hmm. Lord, I know who you have been. And yeah. I know that you are the same God who was, is, mm, and is to amen, come. So amen. you are this God yeah. who can do this for me today. Uh-huh. And what I love is that you weren't going to slow down, mm-hmm. but you were going to say, God, even if I still have to suffer with mm-hmm. this for whatever reason, then I still need you to help me yeah, with it. Right. And you that wasn't going to slow you down. That no. wasn't an option. <laughs> like, well, I'm not going to, I guess I'm not going to serve you. Yeah. You were going to go full on. You're still going to serve yeah. God, but yet you were going to trust that God was going to help. Yeah. Help you yeah. to overcome. Yeah. And then in that, he brought the healing to mm-hmm. you. And what I love too, Franklin, is that Jesus is a God of compassion. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And so through the Bible, we hear so many times that he would bring healing to people mm-hmm. because he had compassion on them. Yeah. So I love to see that God has had compassion on you. And I know that he has healed me at different times when um, he has shown me where I had self-pity. Mm. <laughs> and if there's anybody who could like fall into self pity, that I could say, like, I, I think you, I could understand you justifying self pity in your life, <laughs> but you didn't settle for that's that right. self pity. Self pity, and that's what I've seen about Jesus is that He says, "Don't settle for the self pity. Don't settle for being anything. a victim of yeah. anything. Yeah. Receive my compassion." Mm-hmm. And what I love in that is that it is His compassion that yeah. brings supernatural healing yeah. and in his compassion because he cares for That's us right. and he knows there's a need there we mm-hmm. do need comfort we do need healing we do need nourishment we mm-hmm. do need nurture we do need that love and yeah. that that sweet tenderness of his compassion and there is nothing like the compassion yeah. of Jesus Christ yeah. And when we experience his compassion, that's where the healing begins. Mm, And that's where we let go of our own defenses and Mm -hmm. our own self-protection and to just trust him with that and let his love, his light, his healing power come in. You know, I just love that with Jesus, you just give him an inch and he takes a mile. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) But sometimes too, he's waiting for us to just like, well, if you'll give me an Mm. inch. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to flood in and take a mile. And so I love it so inspirational about your story is that you were recognizing that you were on this journey and you're trusting God's timing, Mm -hmm. but you did not stop pursuing him. You recognized what your inheritance was to live the abundant life. And so you're saying, God, I want that. I'm tired of experiencing the destruction of the enemy, Mm -hmm. okay, I'm ready to experience even more of the fullness of who it is that you say you are and that what you're promising me. Mm -hmm. I just love that. So thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, you see the the radiance and the joy when you're talking about seeing the uh, the other person, I think it was Grant, that you saw him just overflowing with yeah. joy and you're just, just like so the sun was just shining yeah. on him. That's what we see in you, Franklin. Yes, and you. that is just That's beautiful. The Holy it is. He's <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Yeah. And if he can do it in you, I believe he's ready and he to do it in others and he can do it for others as and, well. Yeah, for I'm anybody. Sure. Literally, he can do it for anybody. That's exactly. You know, I'd, I'd like to kind of close us off here with... Revelations 12, uh, verses 10 and 11, and it says, Then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens. So this, this is the voice that John is hearing just kind of ringing out. It has come at last, salvation and power in the kingdom of God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth, the one who accuses them mm. before our God day and night. So the enemy is thrown down and, and really thrown down to be overwhelmed by us. And mm-hmm. verse 11 says this, and they have defeated him with three things, by the blood of the lamb, by their testimony, and they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. <laughs> and I love that verse because it of so many things, it says we overcome the enemy by the blood of Jesus, mm-hmm. by our testimony, yep. but so often we stop right there, and yeah. we don't go, but not loving our own lives even unto death. Uh, unto death. And that, that's, that's what you were talking about, about going all in. 
you know, to get to the full freedom that God has for us, we got to go all in. We got to mm-hmm. go all in for Him, put it all on the table, and that's what it means to not love our life. And and I just want to echo Kim Franklin. Thank you so much for being here and just being an incredible example mm. of the grace of God and and what it means to live it out to the full. It's just amazing, and you're you're an amazing man, and and we love getting to know you. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And I would really love it if you would pray and yeah, just go awesome. ahead and just pray for yeah. our audience in a yeah. moment. But I just want to also just be an encouragement to others. I want you to know that if you are praying for people, if you have some lost loved ones or people that you have really been fervent in prayer, I want to encourage you keep That's praying right. yeah. as we have just seen in this testimony those prayers that prayer that was prayed for franklin saved his life yeah. and god intervened i want us to just be sensitive that's what i want to pray that we'll be sensitive to holy spirit mm-hmm. and when holy spirit brings certain things to mind that we don't just get panicked about yeah. it but we pray it through and we say god you are bigger we release your presence in these circumstances i believe there are some intercessors too, that maybe you've taken on a little bit of heaviness through some of the things that you've been called to pray for. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to encourage you to remember this testimony and recognize that God is responding to your prayers. Um, Don't stay on the, the... the situation, but look to see what is God doing? God, show me how to pray because we know that the prayers of the righteous avail much and it saves lives and Mm -hmm. we care about people's lives. So continue to pray. And then also I want you to be encouraged to have fresh, renewed hope and maybe re-listen to this again and see that God did amazing things and intervened on behalf of Franklin. Mm -hmm. And if God can do it for Franklin, then God can do it for you and things that you are trusting and believing him for and areas that you are recognizing. I need a breakthrough in Mm -hmm. this area. I want to encourage you, just as Franklin just shared, be before the Lord, cry out to God and trust that he is doing a work. Trust who it is that he says he is. He is the God of the Bible. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. And he is ready to move on Mm -hmm. your behalf. So take courage, be hopeful in knowing that our God is a God of hope. Romans 15, 13 says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you will overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So will you go ahead and will you just pray for our audience then today? Yeah, definitely. First of all, thank you so much again. Thank you so much. And it's been a privilege to be part of this this show Thank and just you. have the time to like come and share with y'all what God is doing in my life and things haven't it isn't done yet you know right. what I mean it, it keeps going right. and so yeah thank y'all and we'll hopefully see y'all yes. let's do this again we'll definitely yeah, see you yeah, soon. Yeah, absolutely yeah, so, we're yeah, family but, yeah yeah definitely so let's let's close out and pray all right um you heavenly father lord uh you that are sitting in the throne and your son is sitting next to you and at your right hand, Father. Like we're praying to you, we're coming to you today, Father. Just thanking you for everything that you have done in our lives, Father, for everything that you continue on doing in our lives, even after we have received you uh, as your as our Lord and Savior, Father. You don't stop just right there, Father, but you continue to uh, blessing us abundantly, Father, the same way that you have promised us that you will, Father. And so, Lord, I just pray right now, Father, for anybody that is out there, Father, uh, that feel like they don't, they are Christians, but they are discouraged or like they feel like there has been so much in their lives that they don't even know if they can keep going, Father. I pray specifically blessings over those people, Father, and I pray uh, strength in their heart, Father, and I pray peace in their lives, Father, that they can come to you, Father, and just ask you for whatever mm-hmm. they are they need father and if in more than anything bring everything to the uh to the feet of the yes. cross father that they can just bring it there and leave it there because jesus already paid it all lord yes. father and so he already paid it all the battle the battle is being already won and so yes. therefore we don't need yes. to we don't need to worry about nothing else father but jews uh to be uh, glorifying you, praising yes, you, thank you, and God. giving you all the glory, Father. So I just you, pray Jesus. encouragement towards anybody, Father, that is feeling low of the spirit or that is feeling like they have they've been having like a, a warfare yes. 
in their lives, Father. I just pray over them, Father. I also want to pray over anybody, Lord, uh, that is uh, attempting suicide or that is just literally like feeling alone or rejected or abandoned, Father. I pray over that person, yes. Father, yes. over that person's heart, Lord, that you can be with them and that they would know, Lord, that they are loved. They are seen yes. and they are they are wanted and they yes. are worth the Lord because they are they have been created by you, Father. Therefore, yes. they matter because that you sent your one and only Son to die in the cross for that specific person, Lord. So I pray for those people that are out there, Father. I pray for the world is suffering you, right now in every single in every single way that is suffering, Lord. I pray that your grace, your compassion, and your abandoned love is mm-hmm. gonna come through, mm-hmm. Father that everything that the devil is meaning for bad, mm-hmm. God can use it for good and yes. God will use it for good. And so, Lord, I just pray uh, that you would be looking after the homeless, after the widow, and after the yes. uh, the hurt, yes. after the poor, Lord, that yes. you have promised that those are your people, Lord. And so, Father, I just pray over them that you can mm-hmm. be looking over them, Father, and just keep blessing them, Lord. Mm-hmm. Father, I pray over the lost the one yes. that doesn't know you Jesus. yet, Father, the one that that it is where I was before, Father, I pray over them, Lord. I pray that you can use literally anybody at the gas station, anybody at the cashier, anybody at the coffee shop or like the restaurant, Lord, that is a Christian. I pray boldness over them, Father, and that, they, that whoever is lost out there, that they would have an interaction with a Christian and they would see something different, Father, on them and that they that's that little bit of difference that they see from everybody else is going to drag them into wanting to find out what is it and that they are going to come to find you, Father. Yes. I pray for them, Lord. Father, thank you so much for everything that you keep doing for the word mm-hmm. that you have allowing us to have that instructions that you have given us, Father, so we can have an easy, easier life to live, thank Father, you. whenever we live it under your veil. Yeah. So, Father, thank you so much for everything that you keep doing. And we glorify you and we yes. praise you and exalt your name, yes. Father, every single day. And this testimony it is in mine. It's yours, Father. Um, like you, I'm, Jesus. I'm just a vessel, Lord, and that's all we are. Just a vessel that are serving you, Father. So thank you so much. We exalt your name and pray all this in your mighty Son's name. Amen. 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 If you need personal prayer, we at Trinity Fellowship Church are here for you and would love to pray for you. Visit tfc.org/connect. That link is also in the show notes, or call us at eight zero six three five five eight nine five five. What a powerful story we've heard today from Franklin Rivas Hodge. Did you know that suicide is one of the leading causes of death among young people today? But it doesn't have to stay that way. That's why we're so thankful for organizations like Stay Here, whose mission is dedicated to ending suicide and healing the brokenhearted. You can also be a part of this mission by getting trained and certified to save lives. Stay Here's ACT training will teach you how to spot suicide warning signs, how to ask, convince, and take action with someone who may be suicidal, and how to get help for someone in crisis. Visit stayhere.live to learn more and sign up to help save lives all around you. Don't wait. Visit stayhere.live and take the first step toward preventing suicide. Let's make Gen Z suicide free. Thanks so much for joining us for another episode of More Than You Asked For. Today was a real treat having Franklin Rivas Hodge with us. Yes, Franklin, it's been great having you. And let us know, how can we find you on social media? Yeah, definitely. So I have Facebook and Instagram, uh, and I'm just like that, Franklin Rivas Hodge. You can find me uh, on those two. I don't have Twitter yet. I'm still trying to work myself into social media. So, you bet. Yeah. yeah. All right. Wonderful. We'll, we'll be looking for you there, and we'll have those links also down in our show notes for you. And as always, want to encourage you, we want to answer your questions. So if you would look down at the show notes, there's a link there where you can type in your questions, and we would love to be able to answer those. God bless you guys. We God love y'all. y'all.